Hi, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Time to talk about a brand new documentary. Natty Hogan's here with us after Maria. Hey, how are you? Good to meet you. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. So this was a really emotional documentary. It's a short, but there's a lot packed into it and obviously a personal thing for you. So what was it like putting this whole thing together? Yeah, so I mean, my motivation for making this film originally was hearing all the news reports and reading about families that had left the island and were coming to New York and trying to figure out what the next stage of their lives were gonna be like. And in many ways, the story reminded me of my own grandmother's migration from Puerto Rico mm -hmm. to the Bronx specifically, and under different circumstances, but similar in the sense of, you know, no economic opportunity and, and situation that looked dire. So after getting an understanding of what was happening to the families that were living in New York, I just thought it was really important as a filmmaker and a documentarian that was Puerto Rican and mm -hmm. from the Bronx to seek out in my own community, um, just find out more information about what was happening with people and, and try to make a film about it. I think the really interesting thing is like this isn't that long ago. This is no. two years and people are still dealing with the effects. So just like taking a step back for a second, what was most surprising just about the response? Like even we were talking off camera, like people not knowing that Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Like what were some of the things you encountered when you looked back on this whole thing? Absolutely. I mean, it was part of you know, when we talk about, about making a short film mm -hmm. is how much information you can put into right. a film of, that's under 40 minutes. And as we started sharing the film with people or even conversations I was having with people about it, uh, just the understanding that many people didn't really know much about Puerto Rico or the relationship that Puerto Rico has with the United States, that they, uh, you know, folks that live in Puerto Rico can vote for mm -hmm. who will be president of the United States. They don't have representation in government. Um, so many things like that that just made me have an even deeper understanding that it was so important that the stories of Puerto Ricans, especially under the crisis of Hurricane Maria, were told to also create a deeper understanding of uh, Puerto Rican people as a, as a whole. I think one of the things that got lost in translation was that after all this, people are going from Puerto Rico and, and being thrown in hotels in the Bronx and in the New York area. Like, that's a huge life change. So oh you guys have some really <clears throat> intimate footage of life in the hotel, life with the family. What was it like unpacking those moments as a filmmaker? Yeah, I mean, you know, you think about it, and this is something I always thought about because my, my grandmother mm -hmm. is from Puerto Rico, and I would always imagine, like, you go from living in the mountains of this tropical, you know, island yeah. to coming to the Bronx, uh, you know, concrete, it's loud, it's noisy, there's so much happening. And what that shift is like for someone, especially like a little girl like mm -hmm. Nilda, who is one of the main characters in our film, what stood out to me the most and why we actually in the end chose to focus on the families that we did was the communities that developed out of this crisis, right? So families leave this beautiful island. Not Puerto Rico is nowhere near perfect, but it's very different from the Bronx. And there was a huge amount of culture shock for families that arrived in the Bronx. One thing that was very interesting to me is that I wanted to explore in the film was Puerto Rican identity. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is Puerto Rican identity like on the island? And then we know we all know there's a very strong Puerto Rican identity in the Bronx, totally. but it's totally different. Absolutely. And as a Puerto Rican of the diaspora, you know, I hadn't I never visited the island until I was an adult almost. And um, you know, I was always interested in exploring that relationship. And so part of what this film is also looking at is that and what I really loved and connected with the families that we filmed was how they didn't know each other in Puerto Rico. They end up in this FEMA hotel yeah. in the Bronx, you know, that a place that's so different from where they come from. And they really came together and built this family um, and supported each other to, to cope as best as they, as best as they could. What was the hardest part of the story to tell? Oh man, I think the ending, mm -hmm. The ending was really hard. So basically, you know, I don't want to give away the right. story too much because I would love for everyone to watch Absolutely. the film. Going into this film, we knew that there would be some type of expiration date on the government assistance of the families, and that kind of kept shifting at some point. But the ending of the film and and uh, everything that happens to the families uh, leading up to ultimately what that is was 
was very hard to tell, and it was also a very emotional um, experience. Yeah, I think I another part of your film also is just the emotional distress of all the hurricane victims. I don't even know if we can properly magnify just how brutal it was, not only for young people, but for the old people. So. What did you learn about that situation, just from like a mental health standpoint with all this stuff? I mean, the mental health issues that, the trauma that, yeah. the post-traumatic stress that comes out of living through a natural disaster like this, from the elderly to children is tremendous. And that's also something that we learned, that there was no support for families that after going through that, they, they came to the States and they were dealing with this trauma from memories of the storm, this crisis of where do, where do we go next, and there was never any like system put into place to help them cope with this, and 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 really being close to uh, individuals who were dealing with that, especially the kids, was it was shocking, and the way that they described what it was like living through you know a storm of that magnitude, it was it's it. It just sounded immensely terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, and seeing the ruin of some of these houses too, where yeah. FEMA comes in, it's like you can't live here anymore, and yeah. it's like, okay, where am I supposed to go now? I mean, yeah. these these houses were destroyed. I mean, the area was really just tremendously brutalized, and I think your film does a great job in showing that. So, yeah. what was most striking to you just about all the damage that was done in Puerto Rico? Yeah, well, I think, and what we know too is that the storm itself was only one part of the story. It was really the aftermath mm -hmm. that turned out to where most of the casualties, over 3,000 people died. And how different things could have been if it's properly dealt with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, from from um, that. And, you know, people watched their neighbors die because they couldn't get mm -hmm. insulin. They couldn't, you know, for elderly folks, they, there was no water. There were families sharing one bottle of water. Um, no access to food. People died of dehydration and starvation. Um, completely... Uh, Things that could have been prevented, preventable deaths, mm -hmm. is what most of the casualty, casualties came from. And so the trauma of that as well, of that experience, also just added to not just living through the storm, but living through the aftermath. Yeah, and then on top of that, it's, it's the ignorance of the people in charge. And you have President Trump in there calling it the greatest response to a hurricane. And I mean, it's already bad enough, but that really must be even harder to swallow. So. What was it like putting that part in the film? And how, how do you digest that with the people that you had in there? Just like, these people could have done something more and they didn't. So including the government response in this film was a, a huge challenge. I think, you know, we all had a good idea of the neglect on behalf of FEMA and the US government in Puerto Rico. But we didn't want to politicize mm -hmm. the film in a way that people would not focus on the individuals and, and the real human story of the film. And so part of the parts of the film that do include that are the way that the characters in the film react, you know, to, to the government specifically. Like, we, we were very deliberate about not bringing in all this news footage right. and kind of all these things about the government response, but it was actually like the way they were feeling their real time and real life response to to how, how they were handled. I gotcha. So there's obviously a ton of negatives here. Are there positives that you focus on here, with ter just in terms of the people? Are there positive stories of people coming from Puerto Rico and assimilating into the culture? What are some of the things you focus on? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's so important to focus on the human story. Yeah. And I think one thing we know about humanity is that it's, it, it's like a full spectrum of uh, emotion. For me, in making this film, it was really important not to just focus on the disaster and the negative elements of the film because that's not what I was experiencing. You know, as I filmed with these families in the hotels, uh, there was a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. There was so much um, compassion for each other, generosity among families. I mean, it's something that um, I learned a lot about myself and, you know, you, you imagine yourself in these situations and how you would treat your neighbors and um, it, it was just such an incredible example to me of the best of people and um, one thing I am really proud of of this film is that I think this film demonstrates that in a real way and in a way that really captures the spirit of Puerto Rican people which is warm and joyful and, you know, resilient. Yeah. Is your grandma still around? She's not. She's not. Around, yeah. What do you think she would have thought of this? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, 
I, I don't even have no idea. <laughs> it's a tough one to, <laughs> to tough bite one. into, yeah. It is a tough one, yeah, that's funny. That's that's probably the most uh, unique question I've been asked mm. and also one that I don't, I don't even think I could answer. I'm sure she would have been proud that you were telling a Puerto Rican story, yeah. even though it was a really traumatizing one. But yeah. like you said, just going into the whole identity thing, like, yeah. I'm sure that would have been fascinating for her. Yeah, I, I think so. My mom, my mom really identified with um, a lot of that story mm-hmm. uh, of, of Puerto Rican identity, and I think you know mostly what I do know about my grandmother's struggles was was through my mom and yeah. her witnessing that, and and that was a huge inspiration for for making this film uh, was was sort of reimagining yeah. what my family's own experience was like and seeing a lot of my mom and. Kenya, who is mm. Nilda's mother, right. and, and, and that relationship with children, especially uh, through traumatic experiences and how parents work so hard to like uh, get their kids through it. It's really beautiful. To yeah, see. definitely. And just the fact that you have a runway to tell this story and put it on Netflix where people all over the world will see it. Yeah. People who have never thought about the Puerto Rican journey or the Puerto Rican identity, mm-hmm. they'll get to see that. They'll get to listen to these people speaking in Spanish and trying to figure out how to speak in English. Like, really, you did a great job in showing what it's all about. So I commend you for that. Thanks so much. There you go. Nadia, it's really nice to meet you. All right. Is it, what's the deal? Is it on Netflix now or people can check it out? Absolutely. It's streaming on Netflix. You can check it out. You can download it on your phone. You can watch it in so many different ways. But all right, yeah. cool. Check it out after Maria. You won't be disappointed for Nadia. I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.